I was flipping through the pages of my Holy Ghost prayer book that I got, oh, I think it was all the way back in 1997 when I was confirmed, and I found this little snippet of a reading that I thought I would share with you. It says, the church's devotions are gospel truths in their efflorescence, the flowers of practical faith. Jesus sowed the seeds of truth when he tarried upon this earth. The Holy Ghost cast his bright rays of light upon them, and they developed into a variety of devotions. All the church's devotions, devotions to the holy souls, to our blessed mother, to the saints, are flowers springing up along the wayside of life to give charm and sweetness to our holy religion. It is under the guidance of the Holy Ghost that they spring up. They should all remind us of the fecundity and bounty of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, who teaches us all truth in the manner that becomes our temperament and who inspires these devotions that best suit our times and our weaknesses. That's a very interesting read, how the Holy Ghost truly inspires all of the wonderful devotions that we have. You know, it was only in 1815 that today's feast, the Marian feast of Our Lady Help of Christians was established by Pope Pius VII. It was established in thanksgiving for, to Our Lady for having delivered him from the captivity under Napoleon. But do you know the famous dream of St. John Bosco? He had all of those prophetic dreams. He had one concerning Our Lady Help of Christians. In this dream, he saw a pope steering the church as the Ark of Salvation, it said, through very stormy and rough seas. A fleet of enemy ships, it said, threat threatened the ark, which found its safety between two other columns, the which arose from the sea. A statue of Our Lady stood on one of the columns, and from her feet there hung a large placard with the words, Auxilium Christianorum, the help of Christians. And on top of the other column, which was much taller and much bigger, stood a host, a sacred host, under which was another smaller host with the words salus credentium, the salvation of the faithful or the salvation of the believing. And that was it for that dream. But it symbolized how she would, she would be the protection of the church. One should never forget, though, that Our Lady truly has been with the church since its birth on the first Pentecost, and it was to her, remember? We mentioned it briefly last Sunday. It was to her that the apostles turned for counsel, for consolation, whenever it was needed. And one can never forget that uh, wonderful tradition of Our Lady and St. James the Greater. When St. James was down in Spain, he wasn't having much luck preaching and converting the pagans there, and he became quite discouraged. Now, mind you, Our Lady was still living on earth. She lived back in Jerusalem, and it was made known to her that St. James was discouraged. So, all the way from Jerusalem, she miraculously appeared in Spain to St. To Saint James and encouraged him and reminded him that to persevere in his apostolate, that one day there would be a church built there in her honor. That's how she took care of the apostles, even in those first days when she was still alive. And if you remember correctly, it was also she that spoke behind the scenes to the faithful during those first years and gave them such strength that they would endure cruel tortures and even martyrdom for the faith. And her words took such root that for three centuries we have almost nothing but martyrs as the saints. 
And then again, passing down along the centuries, she has assisted the church from her place in heaven next at the right hand of her son. We think of Pope, Pope St. Pius V at Lepanto, and then only a century later, her help against the Muslim invaders in Vienna. And then 30 years after that one, she helped Emperor Charles VI to defeat the Turks once more. Our Lady help of Christians. Our Lady is something else. There, and truly, as, as St. Alphonsus said of Mary, there is never enough. I love that saying. De Maria nunquam satis is the Latin. Well, we've heard, and we know it to be true, that all graces that we receive pass through Our Lady's hands. But have you ever heard her ref referred to as a neck? Well, she is. She is the neck of the mystical body. It all makes sense if you think of the church as truly this body, a mystical body of Christ, a living being. Christ, we know, is the head. We are the members. We are the different parts. Some are the fingers, some are the hands, some are the arms. We all have our different role to play within the mystical body, just as some are bishops and others priests and religious and laymen. A living body, though, for it to be alive, it must have a soul. That's death. When, when the soul leaves the body, you have death. So the soul of the church is the Holy Ghost, the vivifier, the life giver. And Our Lady, they say, is the neck in the mystical body. St. Bernard said it this way, Our Lady is the neck through which the body is joined to the head, and likewise through which the head exerts its power and strength on the body. For she is the neck of our head, which is Christ, by which all spiritual gifts are communicated to his mystical body, the Church. To put it in even simpler terms, you think of it this way. When we eat, food enters through the mouth. It goes into the head. And for it to nourish the body, it's got to pass through the neck, the throat before it enters into the digestive system. And in that way, the body is strengthened. And by analogy, Christ and his, his nourishing graces that he gives us is channeled through Mary, which is the neck, to the rest of the church's members. That's a really actually a very beautiful and profound teaching of theologians. So you see Our Lady's very, very important role in the church. Today, during this octave of Pentecost, say a prayer to Our Lady, help of Christians, who has always been there through the centuries to help the Church in all of her needs, all of the persecutions. Say a prayer to Our Lady, of help of Christians, for the help to defeat modernism and the Novus Ordo, for the restoration of the papacy, and also for unity among traditional Catholics. I think that's a good prayer, a good intention to have today for this wonderful feast. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.